Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I want to talk about a few touchy topics which is racism towards black people in Korea, cultural appropriation in K-pop and I also want to quickly talk about these specific Asian YouTubers who solely produce content about black people for educational purposes. So I actually wanted to make a video just about the cultural appropriation in K-pop when Jessie's new video Drip came out a few months ago. And apart from the whole debate whether she copies the concept from a smaller black artist and randomly giving a shout outs to Nike when she was asked if she plagiarized the creator or not, or the fact that she has this very apparent black scent or her extreme tanning, apart from all that, there was this one line in her song that triggered a lot of Americans, especially black African Americans. Diamonds blue like a crib, yeah. I'm sorry. But what does a Korean lady know anything about the blue cribs? The Bloods? <laughs> so if you don't know, the Crips are one of the largest, most violent street gangs in the United States. They have been involved in murders, robberies, and drug dealings. And they usually have like these blue bandanas or something like that. And a lot of black people were saying, you know, it's one thing if you are a African-American rapper and you're glamorizing violent gangs in your song, I guess that will always get a pass for some reason. But who the frick is Jessie to write this really tasteless verse into her song about her drip? You know, like it doesn't make any sense. Everybody sing, they be lame, they be cloning. A. Who you think you frontin' on? Uh. Now let's look at J Park's lines. I be in office making major moves to cater my boss type mood. All I ooze is swag. All I do is get the back gangsters to bankers. Oh, you guys are gangsters, huh? Here's another rapper who's a bit confusing. Block B band member Tai said in an interview how Seiko is good at talking black and that he uses this talent for his performances. What the hell is talking black? So in his music video Tough Cookie, Zico raps about how he is so tough and gangster, using the whole black hip hop culture as an aesthetic, but at the same time he wears a confederate flag around his arm, acting black while being anti-black. I don't get that concept. <laughs> I don't know, it's just really cringy, especially for me to see my fellow Asians embarrass themselves like that. <laughs> Okay, Africa and the indigenous people of America are two different things and they are mashing it all together and calling it ethnic hip without doing any research or even credit. Like they're just pulling a bunch of random concepts out of their ass like, yeah, African drums and what else? Um. Uh, the idea of an indigenous person shouting, yeah, let's use that, in that way we can keep our style. But it was never your style in the first place, like you can't appropriate the parts that you like and call it your own. That's not cool, <laughs> don't do that. No! Oh, hell no! Okay, if you guys don't know what this means, I in Korean, but in this context, it's meant to sound like the N word. Stop saying the N word! Oh, what you talking about, me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, stop saying the N word! Hey! Oh, what you talking about, me? <laughs> 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 Stop saying the N word! Stop saying the N word! Ah, uh, it's too cringe. I can't do this anymore. So Min, please help me out. What are your thoughts on this mess? Hi Michelle and hi to everyone else watching this video. My name is Domin and I'm a self-thought artist who also happens to be a black woman. I'll comment on the video of the different idols and entertainers pretending to be quote-unquote black. I don't like it at all and it's racially, culturally, and morally insensitive to do that. I was very disappointed when I found out that a member from Red Velvet was participating in this mess even though she has spent time with actual black women
women while she was staying in the U.S. For her to then go on a TV show and perform the stereotype of a sassy and angry black woman to other Koreans is just so problematic. I could even argue that it's just plain racist. Same goes for all these other idols pretending to be cool with their fake quote-unquote black scent and over-exaggerated gestures. If you guys don't know why this is a problem, let me explain it for you. Firstly, when slavery was abolished in the US, the Jim Crow laws were put in place to legally segregate the black community. At the time, the media was booming and the whites used its influence as their weapon to degrade and humiliate black people in order to enforce white supremacy and white privilege. That's when black caricatures were popularized and blackface as well as performing quote-unquote blackness became a thing. It's important to remember that the KKK actually used these methods to dehumanize black people and to justify their atrocities against them. That's where these stereotypes that black people like watermelon, fried chicken, and that black people are dumb or dangerous came from. Same with the angry and sassy black woman stereotype. It also came from there. Ever since then, up until to this day, the media has portrayed black women and black people in general in a very negative light. For example, they portray black men as predators and thugs and black women as aggressive and sassy. From people's consumption of the media, a lot of them have become anti-black in real life, as they assume that all black people are the way that the media portrays them. It's actually ridiculous though that people fall for these stereotypes because we don't assume that all Indian people start doing a Bollywood dance in real life, neither do we think that all Koreans eat dogs. So why do we do this when it comes to black people? We have been working so hard to stop these stereotypes and to put an end to blackface and other problematic behaviors that people still do. So to then see these Korean entertainers that we sometimes look up to go on and perpetuate these negative stereotypes is just so frustrating and tacky. They do more harm than good. Yeah, I agree. So when I was researching for this video, I found out that G-Dragon from Big Bang used to do blackface a lot, like five, six years ago. So actually not that long ago. And ugh, it's so over the top how many times he did it. One, two, three, four, five. And I don't know who that is, but yikes. Happy Monkey New Year. Huh? Huh? Koreans and Japanese and just generally Asians, it seems like they're so far behind when it comes to cultural sensitivity regarding black people. Like, they don't know the history, they don't know how to act properly, they're so racist without even realizing that they are. And recently, I've looked at the viewer analytics and in the past six months, I've been gaining a lot of Korean and Japanese viewers. So I'm gonna take this opportunity and tell you guys about the history of the blackface. Blackface was created by white actors hundreds of years ago to ridicule black slaves. The shows were intended to be funny to white audiences, but they were extremely hurtful and demeaning to African Americans because they reinforced white people's notions of superiority. This was the time where the stereotypes began because it was literally invented by the white actors. They were enacting these racist stereotypes of buffoonery, laziness, superstitious, cowardly, and hypersexual. The actors also portrayed black people as thieves habitual liars and unable to speak proper English. And during this period, all the performers were also male, so they cross-dressed and portrayed black women as unattractive, highly managed, and also hypersexual. This portrayal is where the mammy caricature originates. The origin of the blackface is so dark and sad, like, just don't do it ever, okay? And I honestly think blackfishing is almost as bad as that, because you're basically, you are using someone's skin color as a costume. Now let's explore why black K-pop stands always cringe when they see an idol in dreadlocks or cornrows. So when black people were enslaved in America, their owners didn't allow them to properly take care of their hair, thus dreadlocks became a common style. And they were nicknamed dreadlocks by white people as a literal derivative of the word dreadful. And as time progressed, when black people wore dreadlocks, they were holding on to that history of their ancestors as a form of defiance and resistance. They are owning it, the same way they took the ownership of the n-word back. And when Korean idols use it as an aesthetic, it kinda erases the meaning behind it, and I think black people have every right to be offended by it. Now let's look at cornrows. Again, before I move on, I want to make it clear that of course I know that cornrows are a traditional African hairstyle that has been a thing since the Stone Age. I'm just exploring how certain aspects of these hairstyles can be directly linked to slavery. I didn't expect this hairstyle to also have a really sad meaning because according to that article, it says that this African braiding technique was created by their ancestors to help prevent hunger during slavery. 
slavery. So this method involved hiding dry food in the braids for survival and yeah, it gives a entirely new meaning to the term protective style. Is that the reason why they call them cornrows? Like people in the comment section, please enlighten me. Anyways, Thumin, what are your thoughts on this? I think they should train their idols, stylists, and hairdressers to be more culturally aware. As we all know, K-pop companies are the ones that decide on the image, songs, and presentations of the idols, so to just blame the idols alone would be unfair. They have whole teams of managers, coordinators, stylists, and hairdressers that all need to be held accountable for the presentation of the idol. So if a training happened, it should be the whole staff of the K-pop company as well as the idols themselves that would need to be trained. I would also like to add that these K-pop companies lack diversity. It wouldn't hurt to employ diverse people to your company to learn what's acceptable and what's not. However, I'm not surprised in the slightest that these K-pop companies don't care about the topic at all. This is just my opinion, so don't come for me, y'all. But I honestly think that these companies sometimes choose to present their idols in a controversial way to get outrage marketing. This is how H&M marketed themselves with the monkey shirt and I don't think it's a reach to think that K-pop companies would do the same. This is just my tinfoil hat tingling though, so take it as you will. Now, let's address the issue with non-blacks wearing protective black hairstyles like box braid, cornrows, and dreadlocks. I personally look at three things to determine if a person is being a culture vulture. I look at intent, understanding, and execution. If a person wears dreadlocks without knowing their origin, why they exist, and just do it because they look cool in a photo shoot, I think that they are being culturally insensitive and it's appropriation. However, if the person has studied the history of the hair and realizes that it's a protective hairstyle for certain type of hair texture, as well as realizes the privilege they have over black people while wearing the hairstyle and they still insist to wear it, then I think it's okay for the person to do so, as it falls under appreciation. Let's look at the handbook for example. It's a traditional Korean clothing. Imagine if Koreans were prosecuted for wearing it and then Karen from the US decided to wear it for her music video because it looked cool and then gets praised for it. You see why that would rub some Koreans the wrong way, don't you? To this day, many black people get scrutinized for wearing their natural hair out or wearing their protective hairstyles like dreadlocks or cornrows to school and work. Some even get expelled or fired from their schools and jobs for their hair. On the other hand, you see others from different races wearing the same exact hairstyle as an accessory and they get cheered and celebrated for doing so. It just all rubs me the wrong way. Of course, it's not the idol's fault that there is a double standard when it comes to hair, but they also have to educate themselves and realize the privilege they have over the minorities that they are copying these hairstyles from, and to either speak against the inequality or just leave the hairstyles be. Okay, so now I want to ask you guys, especially the black viewers, if you think this is a black sound and if it's problematic. With the most stupidest reason, which was my boobs. So these bitches thought that I did my boob job done while I had so much other thing to do. Ugly ass bitches. I wanna do black cause I'm okay. a black queen. Yeah. It's just because a lot of people from New York are like that. They're very outspoken, they're very aggressive. You know what I'm saying? And just cause I live in Korea, like I said, I live in Korea, but I go back and forth all the fucking time. You know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to point that out. I wanted to clear that out. People keep saying that you're trying to, you're trying to be black. I, I don't know how that's possible. Um, stop saying that I'm black fishing because y'all just trying to find a reason to hate on a person. I never even knew what that meant. And I asked, like I said, I asked a million people what that meant and nobody knew. So stop saying that I'm black fishing. A lot of people keep saying that and it's just like, shut the fuck up. Like, shut up. Bitch, my armpits are white as fuck because I forgot to tan my fucking armpits, all right? If I could show you guys my armpits, that shit is fucking white as fuck. People are like, yo, you need to, like, when you tan, you need to, like, because your armpits is white as fuck. And I'm like, I know, I just, I'm Korean, but I just like the sun. That's it. There's nothing more to it. I don't even want to get into this topic because it's just not, it's not relevant right now. As you guys know, I'm from Europe. I live in Europe. I've never been to America, so I don't particularly know how New Yorkers talk. So I'm just gonna let a black woman <laughs> address this topic regarding Ebonics or talking black. Well, let's talk about non-black people doing a quote-unquote black scent. I assume y'all know how problematic it is to pretend to be a black person while doing a stereotypically ghetto accent. Not only are you generalizing a whole race to talk in a certain way, but you're doing it to try and fit in or be relatable. It just all comes off as extremely cringy. Black people come from all over the world and speak in many different languages and dialects. 
I would like to add that often when these entertainers talk in this quote-unquote black scent, they specifically mean to portray themselves as being an African-American. They don't understand that African-American people don't all have the same ghetto accent and neither do other black people from all over the world. It's also funny how they never portray white people or even people from different ethnicities as being ghetto. So why is it okay to portray black people as ghetto based on their skin color? Your accent is usually determined by your socioeconomical status and your location, not your skin color. So I hope you'll understand why it's problematic to paint all black people in one big brush of ghetto. Additionally, I would like to add that if you were born in an area where you developed a certain accent, then I don't mind if you speak in that certain accent. But if you're out here pretending, keyword pretending, to have a quote-unquote black scent to be hip and cool, then you need to reevaluate the prejudices and views you might have about certain minorities. So Thumin actually sent me a DM two weeks ago asking if I could cover the drama about this Korean male YouTuber called Jun. Lee. Jun Lee's whole channel consists of videos about black people. He claims that his goal is to expose racism in Korea and that he wants to educate Koreans about the stereotypes and the racism black people have to endure. But almost all of his videos are in English with no Korean subtitles. So I'm wondering how are Koreans going to understand it properly or even going to find Jun's videos to begin with? As you can see the titles are all in English as well. Second, I think it's very important to know that he currently has 24 videos interviewing black people in Korea and only three videos interviewing actual Koreans about black people. Two were on the streets and one was in his home. So again, how are you trying to educate Koreans when you're not really focusing on them? What do you get out of just interviewing black people on the streets? If they saw a AMBV couple or not, or if they would date Koreans or not, etc. And that might be just me, but if you want to do something similar to the Asian Boss channel, I think questions like this are kind of unprofessional and inappropriate. You never dated a Korean person? I've never dated a Korean person. How about me? Do you have a boyfriend? Uh, no, I do not. <laughs> yes, I do have an Instagram. Yay. Can I get it? Uh, sure, yeah. I think I saw you on Meef. Maybe? <laughs> she did yeah. yeah, I swipe her, but she didn't. No comment. This one interview at his home got a lot of negative attention on the internet, mainly of how blatantly racist and judgmental his friends were. Yes, those were not random people. Those were his friends. For example, one of them said she was pretty for a black girl. Someone else said they wouldn't want to marry or date them because they are ugly or look like a horse. Someone said that he straight up ignores black people if they want to talk to them. And at one point, Jun even laughs with them as if it's so funny. And not one time does he actually try to say, hey, that's wrong or educate his friends. He just lets them say whatever they want without any further questioning or anything really. He just... He's not doing anything. So, of course, there was huge backlash and one YouTuber called Chili Got Soul made a response video. I went out of my way to educate myself on Korean culture and I'm constantly teaching my friends tidbits about Korean culture. Your friends should have already known reggae hair is inappropriate. Your friends should have already known calling a black woman a horse, saying she's pretty for a black woman, they should have already known that shit's not right. How are you trying to educate the whole country? You can't even educate the five friends that you have over your house. How are you trying to educate the whole country? All of your content is in English. No subtitles. I have non-black friends that try to wear braids, have tried to say the n-word, and I shut them down every single time. You talk about how you watched this documentary about black culture and it changed your life. Why not show that to people? Where are the videos of you going out on the streets and showing this to Korean people? This video was so hurtful to watch and for you to put it out there and not expect people to be hurt, not accept people to be upset about it is, is disgusting and it just further proves that you're not trying to educate anybody, you're not trying to help anybody, you're really trying to teach Korean people about black culture. Why are you silencing black women when they're trying to tell you how to go about that? Because this, this was not it. Here are some of the issues I have with Jun Lee's controversial video. Who was this video meant for? What was the purpose of the video? If the purpose was to educate, then why didn't he educate the Korean boys calling black women ugly and build like horses? Why didn't he provide subtitles for Korean viewers on the video so they would get educated not to behave this way? Why did he have a black woman react to the video instead of a Korean person? 
Jung claimed that the purpose of his video was to show black women how some Koreans view them. However, I think this is totally pointless, because we already knew all of this. In fact, we know that majority of the world sees us the way these Korean boys did. So for him to allow his friends to just perpetuate these negative stereotypes of black women is just disgusting, especially since he didn't make any meaningful efforts to correct the boys or have the conversations that were necessary to have with fellow Koreans on why it's racist to have these prejudices. Might I also add that he also closed the comment section so his purpose surely wasn't to start a conversation either. It just all comes off as him just trying to make a quick buck from this problematic video with the expense of black women being disrespected. Jun got very upset with Chili's response video so Chili and Jun both went live together on Instagram to discuss it. Hello Jun. I can I ask you some questions? If you gotta ask me bullshit then no. If you wanna actually have a conversation about this and shit that's relevant to the topic then yeah we can talk. Before the actual conversation, just the one question can I ask you? What's up? Did you got your wig from Costco? I mean, just tell me that. <laughs> Jen, do you really want to talk about looks? Is this what we want to do? No, I mean, just with your wig. I think it's really beautiful. I want to get it too, so. <laughs> Did you got it from Costco or E-Mart? Target? Convenience store, is it? I could really go in on your ass and hurt your feelings, but that's not my brand and that's not what I'm about. I just want to say, you have a beautiful wig. I want to get it too. How much is it? 20 bucks? 15? 5 bucks? Okay, Jun, um, please watch Chris Rock's documentary called Good Hair. You have no idea how loaded and touchy that topic can be for black women. Oh, yikes. I have never said anything life. cross about you. All I said was that you're three feet tall and that's Sorry. Exactly. Yeah, and you did that. So this is my turn. Jen, bitch. how tall are you? You got me a bitch? How tall are you? I'm taller than your ass. I don't think so, baby. You're three feet tall. <laughs> I'm five seven, so I'm totally so, than you. Anyway, do you want to talk about this actual thing or do you want to... What do you want to do? I just want to say you have a beautiful wig. I want to get it too. How much is it? 20 bucks? 15? 5 bucks? I don't know how much it was because your daddy bought it for me, bitch. I don't fucking know. The fuck? Oh, Do you want to actually talk or no? Your dad buy your wigs? No, your Can dad. You? Your dad. Okay, your fucking dad. Don't we call me Edward. Don't call me Your Edward. fucking dad buys me my fucking wigs. Don't I'm call me Edward. I'm fucking stepmom. I fuck that nigga every night. The fuck? Like, are we not going to talk about anything? Or because we can do this if this is what the fuck you want to do. Do you want to talk about it or no? Is all you want to do? Do you just want to bullshit or do you want to actually fucking talk? Do you want to talk about what the fuck you fucking did? Yes or fucking no? What do you want to do? I just feel so sorry for the guy who who hook up with you because his dick will be just like so musty. You know what I'm you saying? You feel sorry for your father? You feel fun? No. You feel sorry for your dad? What are you talking about? I mean, you have like so ugly ass, punk ass bitch. Like who's gonna shit that? You know? No, no one's love your ass, you know? They love you because you're the only foreigner there. And you think you're special and shit? Now suck my bull, bitch. You ain't shit. Very bold, very bold. Yeah. It's crazy that you're three feet tall. Nigga, it's crazy that you're three feet tall and your attitude is <laughs> fucking feet. You toad ass looking motherfucker. The fuck? You gonna talk about somebody ugly? Nigga, bitch, you ain't shit. Like this is pointless. It's so fucking pointless. I already told you before. I'm not here to talk about your looks. I'm not talking about here to talk about anything. You, you already like, talked about my looks. looks. You already talked about my, my looks. You I did. commented on your friends' looks. I said they look like toads, and that's a fact. So I don't know what the fuck we're talking about. I don't know what the fuck we're talking about. You were a little ass. You look like a Jedi. Little ass nigga. So what do you know Jedi? Do you want to jump, 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 jump? Do you want to talk about your video, your content, and how you disrespected black women, or no? Sure, let's do it. So. What was the point of your video? The purpose is so many YouTubers making videos about black women and they're not showing the truth. They're saying, we love black people, but that's not true. Most of the people in South Korea are racist. And I just wanted to show you that there's a racism in South Korea. So then if that's what you wanted to show, why not say any of that? My other question is, your entire platform is about educating Korean people, yet all of your friends are this racist, all of your friends are this ignorant. It doesn't make any sense. No, How actually, you not, no, actually you my, my purpose is... No, no, I am no, still listen. speaking. I, I get it, speaking. I get it. I'm, I'm still speaking. So like okay. I was saying, 
How is your entire platform about educating the entire country, but you don't educate any of the people around you? Listen to me. I hate when non-black people say the N-word. I hate that shit. Okay? All of my non-black people. I never said friends, it. I I'm never not said talking it. about you. Are you going to listen or no? I hate when non-black people say that shit. None of my non-black friends ever say that shit around me because they know how I feel about that. Are you having the conversation with your friends that you should be having with your friends? That's my question. Okay, well, my excuse is, not excuse. I've been not meeting them. Just shut up and listen. I've been not Bitch, meeting them for two years. don't fucking tell me to shut up because I'm being respectful to you. So you no, be fucking I'm, I'm respectful speaking. to me. You, so you, you, you're say, speaking so when I'm speaking. Say, so then you say the same thing that I just said. Hey, I'm speaking. Don't tell me to shut up. That's fucking rude. All right, shut the fuck up then. Listen here, Jun. I'm going to be really real with you. I'm going to keep it a fucking buck with you. Okay. You're not going to want to keep disrespecting me. And that's on that. Just and be quiet and listen. And you're, then that's all you have to say. Be quiet and listen. But talk to me like that again and we're going to have a real fucking issue, nigga. You started talking like this. You call me angry, bitch. You're no, you got on talking. this fucking line and started talking about me, nigga. So stop. Listen, we're having a discussion right, right, and you're going right, to be respectful right, to me right, right. so that you we too. can have Don't a call discussion. Me Do you Don't understand that word. shit? Don't call me N-word. Do you understand that shit? Don't call me N-word. I won't call you the N-word if you remain Good. respectful to me. You be respectful to me and I'll be respectful to you. Fucking period. If you don't call me N-word, I'll be respectful as you want. All right, go. So I've been not meeting them for two years. They were not listening to me. Do, do you know he pushed me when I said, hey, what do you mean black girl? She was a pray for, pray for a black girl, right? The, the friends right after me, he pushed me away, like really hard. Let's see that. <laughs> this is so funny. He acts like his friend was like being super violent, but if you look at the video, he pushed him in a very friendly manner. It's always better to not actually fight, you know? I don't want to have a fight with them because they're just going to be mad at me if I tell them the truth, okay? They don't give a shit about like, you know, how black people are being suffer, you know? They just care about their self. And I hate that. So that's why instead of making videos, and try to make them see the video. My purpose of my YouTube channel is showing to black people the real side of South Korea, okay? And also educating the Korean people, but I don't think I can actually do that. You got it? But you were literally, I'm sorry, are you finished? Can I speak? Yep. You were literally laughing with them. What was the purpose? Me personally, I would be so uncomfortable. I understand what it's like to have racist friends. I'm from Texas. I understand what it's like to have racist friends. I would be so uncomfortable that we would be done talking. That would be the end of the conversation. Why would you continue to allow them to say these things about the women that you claim to love so fucking much? It doesn't make any sense, Jen. It just okay, doesn't okay, make I, any sense. I'm not it. finished. Can I say it? I'm not finished. You're saying the same thing over and over again. And you're not answering my question. I will answer oh. your question now. Go. No. Okay. Uh, why did I laugh? Because you never did an interview before, right? Didn't you? So I've done interviews. Jen, I literally worked on Listen, talk. listen. I literally Listen, I'm speaking. Talk. I've done plenty of interviews I'm speaking. before, and I understand I'm how speaking. things happen in I'm fucking the speaking. moment. I understand how things happen in the moment. I'm speaking. So. I'm speaking. Shut the fuck up. I'm speaking. You got, John, I'm going to be really real with you. I'm keeping it, like, legit a fucking buck with you. Tell me to shut the fuck up one more time, and I'm going to have... Shut the fuck up. Okay. Bet. Bet, nigga. All right. Hey, I'm going to be back. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. I'm going to be... Okay, listen. Um... Do you guys know that feeling when you are so angry and frustrated you just start crying? Because I'm telling you, if this was me, I would probably be crying. And I actually asked Chili after I watched this if she was on the verge of tears, but she said no, she was just fuming. It's so hypocritical of him that he always says, oh, I feel so bad for black people and all the racism that they have to endure. Like, he apparently understands what they go through, but then he goes on live and says this shit about Chili. Not even pretty, though. Not even looking and she's like hang on they got a new wig i should cover up the a little little black right here you know uh this is different from my skin tone so i should do makeup my wig and my skin tone is so different so i'm gonna oh. so pretty. girl you look like a fucking ew like i show your face to my friends i show you about to my friends and then they're like who the fuck is this?
him being a self-proclaimed ally to the black community, knowing very well about the negative stigmas that exist of black women's hair, proceeded to attack Tilly on none other than her hair. Why? Well, it's simple. He knows the struggles we go through for our hair, and it was an easy target to insult. He simply didn't care about making racially charged comments. The second reason I think Jun has racist tendencies is how disrespectfully he treated Chili for simply criticizing him. He told her that no Korean would ever date her, that she's ugly, fat, and a bunch of other low-life insults. You think you're something special because you go to Korea, you meet Korean people? They don't give a shit about you, right? You think they're gonna marry you? <laughs> marry my ass. Koreans are racist, yo. They're ignorant, okay? These comments all have racist undertones, whether Jun intended them to be there or not. It's no secret that black women are always the butt of everyone's jokes. Neither is it a secret that many claim that we are the least attractive race, which of course simply is not true. So for Jun to play that up and call her all types of ugly and that no Korean would date her is disgusting. Secondly, the reason many black women started to wear wigs in the first place was because they were forced to assimilate. If you don't know about it, please look it up and research on the topic. But we didn't start wearing wigs because we particularly wanted to. It was expected of us to do so in order to advance in our careers and in life. Moving from assimilation though, many black women nowadays wear wigs as a protective hairstyle or just because they are convenient. And we still get dragged and glowned for our hair while people like Kylie Jenner gets praised for hers, even though we all know she uses wigs a lot. So knowing all that, for Jun to go all the way there and ridicule Chili for her wig is just side-eye worthy. Since Jun claims to be this big ally out to educate Koreans about racism, he should have known better. I admit it, I love black women. So what? What are you gonna do to me? What are you gonna do to me? I will make videos whatever I want, unless my fans still hate me, okay? Unless they still with me, then I will think I'm doing something right, so I'll just keep doing it. I'll not stop it. Oh yeah, I love black people. I love black culture. I love the history. I love about everything about black. It's so frustrating to watch him say shut up to the black girls who just want to have a conversation with him. What the fuck is this? Seriously. I don't think, but you don't know if they're friends or not. You just, I mean, you, you, you just... Shut the fuck up. So how are you gonna know me and my friends are friends or not, huh? But you're a queer boo. I don't listen are to the queer boo. So you're not gonna listen? So are you gonna yeah, listen you. Right just, just to you. Just from you. Are you because I don't listen right to the queer boobs, you know? Why am I upset about her video? I just didn't like her in, a, in the first place. I didn't like her video about I hook up with a Korean idol. And you call me as a fucking racism using black women and black people when you make fucking videos while like hooking up with a Korean dude in a club. You said that I'm fetishizing the black uh, uh, women. But just think about who's really doing the fetishizing here. I saw the video that you uh, made about the Korean idol hookup, whatever the video. You're the Korean boo and I don't like you. I didn't like your video at the first time. Seriously? They're ruining our culture, person like you. You're ruining Korean culture, Chili. Chili, can you just stop really fetishizing the Korean culture? Jun kept talking about how he doesn't like Chili in the first place because she made one. Okay, one. <laughs> story time video on how she hooked up with a Korean guy. And he's using that as evidence saying she is a Korea boo. But I personally think, and I want to make it clear that it's just my opinion. I'm not saying it's true. It's just my opinion. I personally think that he's projecting his own trauma onto her. Because in one of his first videos, he talked about a black girl who cheated on him in a club. And after that, he made a couple of videos saying he doesn't like Korean fuckboys, how to avoid Korean fuckboys. And yeah, he seems to have a huge disdain for them. And you know, I'm sure something like this must have hurt him a lot. He's only 18 and when you're that young, a heartbreak like that can influence you a lot in how you view certain people who have wronged you in Past. Don't call me N word. Uh, you call me N word, bitch. Don't call me N word. Do you understand that shit? Don't call me N word. Don't call me N word. Don't call me N word. Jun kept saying he doesn't want to be called the N word. How are you an ally to the black community and not know that some black people use that word? It's just so mind blowing to me that he gets more offended by being called the N word than an actual black person is. It's not like a white dude is calling you that. It's a black woman. She can never say that word and mean harm by it. That's how white supremacy works. Just the ignorance and the selective outrage of this guy is crazy. Before educating the whole of Korea, I think he should take a moment to educate himself on the basics of black culture. I 100% agree. Before we go on, I want to say that please, guys, don't bully Jun. Don't 
bully anyone, okay? Educate them, yes, but don't you dare send them hate, okay? And Jun, if you're watching this, I quickly want to say that this whole video is protected by fair use law. So if you're gonna try to take this video down claiming it's copyright infringement just because you didn't like the video, hey, it's not gonna work. There are two other Korean YouTubers who tried to do that on a black beauty YouTuber called Darcy. Pony took down this video just because of the thumbnail. Pony didn't like the screenshot Darcy used. Pony thought it was racist because of the half-closed eyes. Okay. <laughs> of course, Pony lost the case because that video is fair use and you can't take someone's video down just because you didn't like the thumbnail. Jelly tried to take another video of hers down. I think Darcy did a video recreating a look Jella did and Jella took the video down just because she didn't want to be associated with Darcy. Don't believe me? Well, she literally admits that in her pinned comment of that video. So Darcy didn't fight back this time because I believe she said she didn't want to have that video up anyways because Jella is a colorist. The reason why I wanted to share this story quickly with you guys is because I feel so angry for Darcy that she had to deal with that shit and I can't help but feel like don't you guys agree that this feels extremely racist? I honestly encourage everyone to do commentary videos on anything that concerns them. So Tumino, she had some very strong opinions about these clickbaity videos like Do Koreans like black people? Would K-pop idols date black people? Koreans touch black people hair for the first time. Korean eye contact with a black woman. And before I let her talk, let us cringe at this video for a second. I don't know about you guys, but they're kind of acting like black people are this alien race and ooh, oh my god, so different. Let's look at them. <laughs> it's like they're not zoo animals. Why does this content exist? It's so weird. My take on the clickbaity, do Koreans think black women are attractive type videos booming on YouTube. Shortly put, I think they're trash and I'm pretty sure no one asked for these type of videos to be made, cause I sure didn't. I think these channels are banking on young and impressionable black teens who are curious if their oppas will like them regardless of their skin color and for these channels to then capitalize on that is just not okay. They usually never target other races and only have this energy for black people. They also mostly lean on the fetish side, often over-sexualizing interracial couples. I just personally think that they're tacky and don't have any substance in them, especially the ones where they ask about black women's attractiveness or staring at black women. If they want to make videos about black people, then how about covering some important topics while you're at it? Maybe talk about the lack of diversity in your country, or the fact that there's still segregation in Korea where foreigners aren't allowed in certain restaurants or clubs. How about talking about colorism? No? Okay. Anyway, sorry if I kept rambling, I tried to cover my bases well, but I also didn't want my responses to be too long. Thanks for hearing me out, and good luck with the rest of the video. Sorry again for my voice, I almost lost it, I have a really bad flu right now, but I hope it wasn't unbearable to listen to and I can't wait to see what you think of all of this. And I can't wait to read all of your thoughts as well. This was a long video, but I hope it was interesting or educational. Please check out my friend Thumin, she makes amazing art. And yeah, check out Chilla Got Soul as well. And again, please don't bully anyone, educate them, yes, but don't freaking send them hate, okay? I'm sick and tired of seeing hate on the internet. It's so unproductive. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.